Sonke, in one word, it's... Mm, one word. I'm sure you seem to realize that Sonke, we don't describe anything in one word. Interesting. Oh, it's difficult to actually describe the organization in one word. All of us together. Men, women, let's work together. Exemplary. I, I think I would probably say passionate. Dynamic. I think Sonke is, 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 is like your home. Making a difference in the communities. Sonke in one word. Life changing. Life changing. joined by Sonke Gender Justice Network. The scale of violence against women and children in South Africa is enormous. We were one of the highest uh, you know, countries that have incidents of HIV, mm. of rape, of domestic violence. Sonke Gender Justice says rape survivors are exposed to secondary trauma when reporting cases to the police. What we always say about our police is that people are scared to be victimized. We are sending that message to our leadership, the ANC. Part of our advocacy is to say to government that the high rates of gender-based violence in South Africa are unacceptable. Sonke Gender Justice Network must be uh, pretty pleased with today's ruling, I'd imagine. We are coming a long way. It started as a, as a small organization, really. And then expanded to today where we have 80 staff, we have five officers. Working continentally and with connections internationally. On our 10th year anniversary, I'm very much excited to say women are in the key driving seat of this organization. I've appreciated watching Sonke grow over time um, and evolving because South Africa has evolved into a space where women and men lead Sonke now and are asking questions that require men to change. Sonke challenged the status quo, which is what um, feminist ideology um, proclaims that it needs to do. And once as the a gender just world seems to be so easy, but actually it's hard work to make to make that world and, and I think Sonke is, is contributing to that massively. This organization started around community mobilization and community education very much was what Sonke was doing. In South Africa we've got nearly a hundred community action teams of women and men in urban and rural areas working together to demand justice. Community mobilization is a process that is an ongoing towards, you know, um, building democracy. The issue of safety to women and girls, it's a non-negotiable issue. Even as small as you think you are, or as insignificant as you think you are, one step leads to two steps. Two steps leads to millions of steps. As Sonke, we're not only working with South Africans, we also work with foreign nations. Some of them, they don't know where to report issues of gender-based violence. When they find themselves HIV positive, they think they're not supposed to get healthcare services. Because of the work that Sonke is doing in the community, explaining to people their rights, a number of people, they want to serve in their community and take this work back to their community. Sonke's work is around social justice and the One Man Can has really, really helped Sonke to drive that agenda to include men in the conversation. When it comes to violence against women, by men, we are not going to solve that problem without dealing with men. Men are part of the solution. We are creating a space for men to begin to talk about our own issues yes. that affect our tissues. Yes. Yes. The law, unfortunately, doesn't implement itself. 
one needs to always to be vigilant. The role of watching or of playing some sort of a watchdog or of looking at what is being done by the powers that be like the state is a critical role. It was the NGO, the Sonke Gender Justice Network, laid the charges over Malema's remarks that Jacob Zuma's rape accuser must have had a nice time with him as she stayed for breakfast. We want the African National Congress to hold Malema accountable. It was a prime opportunity for us as Sonke Gender Justice to test the law of the land. I'm all very prepared and ready to go and tough it out with Malema. But you know, I have no problem. Julius Malema found guilty of hate speech and harassment. Gender activists win the first round. If you say those kinds of things, there's an organization that's going to come after you. Holding leaders accountable was one of our best strategies ever. We actually employed as song. We were known as one of the organizations who are standing for human rights. Patrick Wasani, the ANC Youth League chairman for Joburg Inner City, has uh, been charged with the murder of his girlfriend, Nosipo Mandleleni. Wasani allegedly beat up his girlfriend to death with a shambok and a broomstick. The manner in which he killed her was defined by the judge as the master beating his own slave. She bled to death. This case, we knew about it because of the previous interventions that Sonke did in Yeovil. Top story, former ANC Youth League leader Patrick Wisani has been sentenced to 22 years in jail. He was convicted of separate charges of assault and intimidation. Sonke has been calling for a, a budgeted for national strategic plan on gender-based violence. We demand an NSP that creates improved implementation of TPV response services, focuses heavily and invests strategically in prevention. One of the tools that Sanka uses to further human rights is litigation. The idea is that it changes the game. So it's how you, for example, with Polsmoor, how you suddenly decrease overcrowding after years of inaction. Constitutional Court Judge Edward Cameron described conditions there as deplorable. Prison conditions have been declared unconstitutional at Cape Town's notorious Polsmoor prison. Immediately they had to decrease overcrowding to 150% and at the time it was sitting at 250%. This is really significant for detainees um, across the country because it sets a precedent for what is expected and what kind of standards we expect to have in prisons to meet the conditions of human dignity. The people that are affected by silicosis are our own fathers, our own brothers, our own neighbours, our own... Uh, it's it's the wives, the kids, the aunts, the grandmas who have to take care of them. Women are also suffering from secondary, if I can call it, trauma of this disease. We wanted to make sure that in discussing and looking at compensation of mine workers, that the court pays due regard to the role of women and thus includes them in the compensation scheme by developing the law in order to recognize their claims. The inaugural State of the World Fathers report indicates that encouraging and supporting fathers to play bigger roles in the lives of their children is vital if real gender equality is to be achieved. Sonke, working with a group of women's rights organizations, advocated for an improvement in the parental leave framework in South Africa. And we achieved a, a landmark shift in terms of the language in our labor law. Beyond maternity leave, the gender is not specified in terms of who qualifies for leave. It talks about parents and that really frees it up for any sexual orientation and any gender identity to qualify for leave. And I think that is a landmark achievement. We have to promote equality in our relationships. Some of us will be the fathers of tomorrow. It means we have to change that mindset. Most of the thing is to show support to your partner and to show love.
we're not only a national NGO registered in South Africa, but we also serve a very important role as the Secretariat to Men Engage Africa. This symposium builds on a message that men are either part of the problem or part of the solution. Men Engage Africa is a global alliance of NGOs and other civil society partners, including UN agencies, who have come together on gender justice work. Some of the work that Sonke has really been successful with has been working with faith leaders in the region around progressive ways of thinking and being role models to communities where they function. Subgrounding is a process where we act as a pass-through between our donors and our partner organizations. Many of them on the African continent, but also some in other places of the world, including India, Chile, Trinidad, and so on. Some organizations do not have uh, governing bodies, and they've got boards now. There's a significant part of subgranting is also about capacity building and development. South Africa continues to have the largest number of people living with HIV in the world. If you look at the statistics on, on HIV, it's very clear that the most vulnerable population is young women. The society is not violent in some abstract sense. Men are violent towards women. So if you don't address violent men, then we will continue to see the same statistics and we will continue to have the same kinds of problems. So working with men around HIV is a no-brainer. Together with UNAIDS and a number of other international organizations, we were able to um, contribute to the development in a very major way of what's called the Global Platform for Action on Men and HIV. That platform is now being rolled out across 22 countries in Africa. That has shown that the African continent can lead global discussions around men and HIV, which is as it should be because we have, we continue to be the continent with the, the greatest burden. And it will transform the lives of men and women and it will contribute in fundamental ways to a more effective AIDS response. What a lot of people don't realize is that there are quite a number of people working behind the scenes. For Sanki to be able to implement its programmatic work, we have to have very strong operational systems, policies and processes in place. And in that way, we, we strive to reach the same objectives and our vision and mission. So much more to gender justice than what we thought it was. You know, Sonke has just begun. The work is only just begun. If Patrick was something that I could just take, open a big hole and just dump it there. The very idea that you have more and more men wanting to claim some piece of feminism, not in ways that are about controlling power, but in ways that are about supporting and being in alignment with feminist principles is a sign that things are getting better. When you work in this field, you quickly realize that you don't only become a gender activist at work, you live through it. Working at Songa challenges you as a person to do what is right, to reflect on how you have been socialized. The ideal world that I would like to see it would be around women being able to live, to be free. Where their rights are taken seriously. In a world where there is no discrimination. A society free of rape, 
and violence. I pray every day that my sons grow up to... To understand that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's, it's okay to be a young man that feels free from the, the burden of harmful masculinity. They don't have to fit into stereotypes or boxes. My daughter, if I have one, um, can grow up in a very uh, equal society in terms of gender issues. I would like um, Zoe when she grows older and even now to live in a world where she can wear whatever she wants, you know, without having to fear what people are going to say about her. And I've always thought I would want a real commitment to listening, hearing, and taking on the difficult questions. And I think there's no question that Sonke has that in spades, that commitment to just be open and to stay trying.